Bit of luck, that's life. Where's me now? G'day, how you going? Are you Annapolis here, your acrylic guru? Welcome to me beginner's video. It's a tutorial on how to paint a painting, eh? Uh, <laughs> you saw the, I've, I've, I found a picture on a free website and it's, it's quite a, a good picture that a beginner can learn to paint. And my channel's all about that, showing you beginners what you can achieve. Now, if you think some of them are out of your league, they're not. I know I'm here to show you that they're not okay. Now, I'm going to bring that up there, because I want to put the links in the description below, so people that join this live show later on, they can look at the links if they want to throughout the show. And if you're watching the replay, the links are in the description below anyway. And there's about, um, what would you say? There's about 10 there, and all my tutorials are for sale as well. So just remember that. So it's taken me a couple of seconds to do that. Bing, bang, boogie, I'm saving it now. So the picture on my thumbnail at the moment, is the one I just took off the website there, but I'm gonna paint that my way and I'll just show you, okay? Then when I'm finished, I can take a photo of my actual painting and I'll use that as the thumbnail. All right, so I'll go back here just so as I can bring you up, because I've got another screen here. When I do live paintings, I cannot answer everybody's question, but if I do see one and I have time where it permits, I will do my best to acknowledge that person or answer their question. So I'll get this going up here. And then I can see, I'll do a quick sound check too. I've left it a bit late to do a sound check. Let me just listen to here as we get going. Got a few people in there. Um, where's the sound? Um, I'd better press play and it'll help, wouldn't it? There you go, I can hear it, sounds fine. We've got Karen Sue Smith. We've got Anthony, g'day Anthony, g'day Cobber, how you going? And we've got Lucy, Lucy Martinez. How are you, Lucy? There's 18 people watching so far. And we'll get this tutorial going. So I'll get this over on my bigger um, screen here. There we go. And then I can see what you are saying, if I need to answer this. And I'll bring up back over here. I need to use this reference. Yeah, I found it on Pixabay. There's so many there, and I like to add my own flavours to paintings. When you see a, a picture you want to paint of using it as a reference, just remember, you run, you, that's all you need it for, a reference. Put your type of sky, the way you learnt how to paint skies in it. Try not to paint everything exact. You don't have to, okay? And you can put your style of water or trees. This one's got a nice little jetty sticking out, go and get out of everything in the sunset there. So I'm gonna make sure all that happens as well. So before I bring you over, I've got my craft paint. I've got a, oh, is that? It's not metallic, good stuff. I've got a new bottle of this. And I'm gonna do the top half first. So I'm putting just enough paint there to do me sky area. Nine times out of 10, your sky needs mixing and blending, and I'm using my clear medium retarder, the one that looks like baby oil, but it is not baby oil. And I'm gonna put a, a dobbly amount over there. Then I will bring you over. And get you down on the palette there. And we'll get going, so. Here we go, and what have we got there? Karen Moyer, g'day Karen. Karen, um, is that Kareen? And uh, we got Lee, L Lily Lilani. I'm pretty sure that's Lilani. He's all going. All right. So what I'm doing, I'm getting this on my flat two-inch synthetic brush, just something I bought from the hardware. And it's quite a big flat brush, because when I'm doing a sky on an A3 size canvas, there's no mucking around, it just gets right on there. And I'm using a canvas cloth, a toothed canvas cloth. And when or if this painting gets sold, I will glue it to a canvas panel. Yeah, Jeff, there's a delay in that one. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Jeff said put the camera up, but he was looking at the monitor, not me, realising there was a this, uh, what do you call it, a, a delay. So 
anyway, I've, I've put this, this on to undercoat the sky and I'm brushing it left and right the way I normally do. Okay, and we've got a lot of gunk on there. So the gentleman I am, I'll wipe it. So we've got no mess on our thing there. We'll give it a good wipe. And then we want to go for the sky. So I'm looking at the colours in that picture there and I can see, well, this is my opinion. You know, you might have someone that's real technical on colours and they might see something more. But I see the yellow ochre that I want to use and I see the Indian yellow that I want to use and I see a tidbit, just a tidbit, of burn umber. Oh, if I can get that out. <clears throat> there we go. Too much of that. All right. Now, what am I going to do here? Um, I'll go the yellow, then maybe the dark. Yeah, so I'll go the yellow first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the whole sky yellow. Uh, maybe not too yellow, Ian. Um, so I'll do just the middle bit first before I add the yellow oxide. Now, if you want to paint this, Follow my procedure, and you can't go wrong. So what do we got? We'll go in the middle. They've got a, there's the middle there. We're, where we're going to have the sun. So I just want to crisscross that like that. See what I'm doing? Now I'm going to the tip of my brush where there's no paint, and I'm bringing it into that white, doing that, okay? See, there's no paint on the tip there, and that's what's moving this paint, and pretty much pushing it around in, a, in the type of blend that I want. There we go, look at that. We've got a nice yellow area where the sun's going to be. Now we'll grab the yellow ochre and we'll mix with that. And we'll get a different value of this mixed. Both sides of your brush. Ivy, g'day Ivy, here you're going all the way from New Zealand, eh? That's good stuff. And Doug Doss, g'day Doug Doss, there you go mate. Alright, so we'll get all this. This is not a normal time I go live, but I've got the opportunity and the time and the planets have lined up. Now I want to get this around that yellow bit before I merge them. Okay, see the difference in the colour? Come across the top, around this corner. Stop, I'll pick up some more and get this colour all the way over here. I'm bringing it to that yellow quite an easy, under there, quite an easy procedure. 100% doable, 100% doable. Now I'll do that, look at that, eh? All the way across the bottom and bring that into that yellow bit there like that. How's that looking, Jeff? No? All right? Spot on. Yeah. All right, there we go. Now I've got to wipe that again. We're still wet. Everything's wet. I do want to get a little bit of this paint. I could have, I probably could have left that on there. I want to get a bit of this into that yellow ochre now, just to create those darker elements and aspects of the sky colour. That's pretty much uh, an evening one happening there. That's a bit too dark. Get some more there. And I want something, I'll get that up there. We'll get some darker aspects going there like that. Something up there. Pick up a bit more and just get something like that, that, and there we go. Now what I'll do, I'll grab a blending brush and I want to blend that all together. So I'm going to start with the light a bit first. Okay, and as you blend, those who know, get yourself a rag, paper towel or something, just so as when you're getting build up on your brush, you can control what you're going to contaminate on your canvas by wiping it. Look at all that what's on there already. Now I want to blend this darker value within there, just like that. Let the turmoil happen and the clouds start to behave like clouds if you see them happening. It doesn't have to be a perfect 
one even smear from the brush on the canvas. You need that different values of light and dark values of that colour. But I do not like these dots that I just got there, so I'll try and get rid of them. There we go. And watch this. Here we go. I'll get that camera up a little bit more. Like that turn more of this. Now these are the colours roughly I feel that's in the sky but I'm not getting lost trying to copy every shape of that reference picture's sky, the clouds and whatnot. I'm just putting my own there so I'm not getting lost. I've looked at the picture and it's got this colour and that colour so that's what I'm using. Okay, now I want to grab a pouncer. Uh, what size do I need? Something about um, this size here. Okay. I'll grab this white paint. I've got to get some glare in the middle. So I'm bombing that on. And in the middle there, we want to get some white just there and getting some whiter values within all this yellow. This is not the best paint for this. I like to use good titanium white, I'll show you in a minute. So I'm just using this to dob that glare. Okay, I'm gonna wipe, that. see it's all yellow? I've got a rag there, I'm gonna wipe it, look at that. Just wipe it like a bloody gentleman, there you go. There you go, and then we'll put that glare back there. Now what I will do, where's my titanium white? There we go. I'm going to grab some titanium white. Uh, well, we're 11 minutes on here. And I want to start putting some value of um, clouds in the sky. So I'll grab some of this. I'll do the lighter areas first. Tabitha Williams, get out here you go. Now I want to grab some of this and bring it from this yellow. Oh, let's pick up some more on your brush, your dag. This is a lot thicker, this paint. And then bring into these colours here. I'm, I'm going to probably copy the, um, the shape type of those clouds within the reference picture. There we go, like that. Now, they're very subtle. I've got to blend all that white there because that's got a lot of retarder in it, that craft paint that I put there. I might put that back again with the actual titanium white. So we're getting some subtle clouds here. Now I'm going to wash that brush and rinse it. That's just what you can hear happening there. <clears throat> Alright, I'm just picking up some more white paint because I want to get a lot more of that happening there. I might darken it up a bit more there. Get some more cloud coming over here. And this should pick up all the, um, the brown, the yellow flavors, the caramelly flavors to create our colors within the sky, okay? Get there. Down here. Some more darker ones over here first. I want some more, a little bit darker there. It's just not dark enough. Maybe something over here. I'll grab that blender because when I put the white in there, it'll pick that up. It's going to be our darker values there. And the white does the rest. Alright, if you're using the same brush like I am for the clouds to apply the cloud colour on, you need to wash it and rinse it every time you're picking up new paints. That way you've got dry paint there. Let's get something here. Uh, where's our dark there? So get all this into that dark. I'm, I'm mainly hovering over the top of it and I'll scoot down there like that. And get a bit more and then maybe put some over here. Get that white on there. Just so you've got something to blend into that darker brown colour. 
We'll get this one, two more together. I might have to add the white, I mean not the white, the, um, the darker colour back over the white. Tickle the top there. Same here. Pretty much the same way I do the um, greys in my blue skies. Get some more of this. Get some here. Two more of that, get it going. They're just subtle clouds, these ones. Now I'll pick up that dark colour. And where are we? Like this, get those dark colours scooted back in there. And that'll be more achievable to blend together. You know how I add yumminess? You've seen me add yumminess, those regular viewers. And then you can always pop in some more white if you need it. <clears throat> oh, I want a bit over here, just there, nothing too much. Let me blend that in there, just to give it some darkness on the bottom. And some in this one here. See, that's all it is, and a bit of blending around, leaving the turmoil. Might be get a bit, oh yeah, a little bit of that darkness right in there. How's that looking? Okay, I don't want just a bit more here. Something there, another dark cloud backlit. I wonder if they can hear that plane going by. <laughs> I'll get some white into that. A brighter colour there. Brighter grey is pretty dirty, but. Is my drink anywhere there, Jeff? Yes. All right. The sky is just about done. But we need to crack that middle open now. So I just want to grab the titanium white. Uh, when do I put the tube? Mixing with that yellow and get a good strong glare happening there with those colours. So we'll, we'll get that happening. <clears throat> okay, I'm just picking up titanium white so I didn't bother moving the, the camera. I want real glare here, glare. And we're gonna, that's it. And we're gonna get a lot of this spiraling onto that now. Okay. Work out how far you wanna blend this. Does that look glary in the middle, Jeff, to you? Huh? Yeah. This is going to get covered up with a. This is going to get covered up with a lot of um, trees here. I'm not worried about this corner. Just got some detail there. Do I have any ochre colours that are in that or not? Didn't make it look as bright. There we go. I'm just picking up some of the yellow ochre and wiping it and blending it within there as well, just to give some yummy values. There we go. Some three-dimensional values. Better. Huh? <laughs> there we go, there we go. What's that side like? This is just yellow ochre I'm using here. Twisting it, blending it, there we go. Yes, yeah, look, once I get those trees in front, it'll um, give it the aspect that I'm looking for. 
Um, I do got to clean this brush. So I'll just go over here. I'll give this one a wash and a flog. So I'm going to need this for the water. And you give it a severe flogging. Give it a flap. <clears throat> okay, back to here. It's 2.30 in the morning here. No, 12.30 in the morning here. Yeah, I'm sorry we can't accommodate everybody's time zone, but there's always a replay to watch. Can't wait until I paint too. Uh, what am I doing now? Um, I've got that done. <clears throat> I'll just pull this horizon line tape off. Is the camera on there yet? Because, and I'll just smear that ridge out of the paint because all that's still very wet, okay? And then while we've got wetness on the board, I'll quickly, what's the, the water? Okay, I'm going to be the French ultramarine blue. Not too much and a bit of the um, green, I mean not green, is that oaky, yellow ochre. So I'll bring you down to the palette in a minute. I've got to get the craft white down here, we should have enough of that, just to paint the bottom half. Okay. So we'll get this against the horizon line there, and then we'll get all this bottom half. Done in there. Just so that, what, what I did, put this white there, it creates the bottom, it allows the bottom to become such a blendable surface. Now I want to mix up the water. So the, to me, the blue's darker. Can you see that on the palette there? Yeah, got my Indian yellow, French ultramarine blue. And I want to find this dark flavor that's going to suit the sky. All right. There we go, I'll get a bit more so I've got enough. Get it on both sides of the brush. Need more blue. I don't know what color it's making, but I feel it's going to do what I want it to do. There we go. I'm going to have a bit of a... The beach is going to be about there. I better move the camera. I just did that line there. And I want to grab this water down. And we'll just put this whole flavour on there first. And then I can add the um, darker and brighter values of this as I go along. Okay. I don't like that white ridge shape. I just want to get that off. I'll use this as a scraper. Come down the painting. Here we go, look at that, eh? Too easy. This is kind of that, um, it's got that grey, bluey, watery, I, know, I, know, I don't know what colour it's called, but it's got that value that I'm looking for in the water. There we go. And we're going to have some darker and lighter values as well. And then some light hitting it. So that's that there. I want to get a bit darker value now. So I'm just adding a bit more of the French ultramarine blue in there. There we go, this value here, it's more greyer looking. <clears throat> and I want to get all this bit here a bit more, come on, get more, get a bit more. There we go. Just something to darken this side up, because it's got that value in the actual photo and it suits the photo. There we go. Something where there might be some waves. 
Now we want the sand. I'll wipe that brush just so as I can pick up the um, yellow ochre on its own and maybe a little bit of burnt umber. Just to get the um, the sandy part of the shore here, and then I want to push that and the water together, just so as you can't see where they meet. Here we go. But I'll I'll define that when I put the water laying over the um, the sand. That worked out all right, I suppose. Oh, best one ever! Amazing! I love this. Beautiful. The best one, eh? Yeah, oh, that's one, that's one of many. <laughs> now, what do we do now? Oh, before we carry it away there, I want to dry, that's pretty much all the blending. I want to dry this top bit here. Of course. I want to get some um, glare on that water before I finish the water. And then we can add the simple but effective, um, what do you call it? Simple but effective jetty and the trees, palm trees and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it, that's it. So I wanna, I'm just gonna cover up the horizon line lightly, gingerly. There we go, just something like that. Don't press it on, just press it to the edge there. Grab your toothbrush, and we're gonna do that um, reflection glare on the water, okay? So I'm grabbing a toothbrush with some of that craft paint, that's a, a looser body paint. And I'm getting it all on the tips of my toothbrush there. And we want a main bit of glare Probably, is that camera there? Yeah, I'll get this there first. So there's our main glare, boom. I'll just do that. I'm gonna wipe the brush. This I need to be subtly in there. And we'll do this again, just to get that like that. There we go. And we can chunk that up with our white but it's not wet enough it's not coming off properly so I'm adding more water to that paint getting it onto the tip of the toothbrush there and we'll try and get some nice glare happening everywhere yeah yeah that's better beautiful all over that bit there because that's the real glary bit this acts like the light shimmering on the water. I've done this in a few paintings, people have seen it. I might put a little bit of pockets of it here. And while I've still got that blending brush that I blended the water with, I'm gonna separate some of this, maybe a bit over here, just to add some bullshit, you know. Bit more. Oh, a bit there, somewhere I can add a gap. So I want to grab a gap. Just there, I'll wipe that. Don't know if you can see that or not. Just a gap within it a bit. I'll take that tape off, hopefully it doesn't peel. There we go. If you, if you look at that, <coughs> I don't know if you can see properly. When, you, when I take the photo, you'll see what I mean, eh? We've got some good glare happening on the water there, right? Eh? Um, what colour did I use for that? Um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was that one. So I will darken it up a tidbit more just so we get some wet aspects on our sand as well, just to give it a bit more realism because if there are any detail police out there they like to pick on the stuff we leave out don't they 
Um, I'll just do it about here, just a bit darker, that'll do. Bugger it, I'm not gonna get too carried away. Only like, if you start changing it too much, you could stuff it. That'll do. Now bear with me. I've got to dry, I've got to get the trees and the jetty on there. That's half an hour. I want this one, Ian. I'll send you payment in the morning considering it's sold, please. Uh, COD, cash on delivery. Now, well, all my paintings are for sale, those people who don't know. And how you purchase one while I'm drawing this, there's a PayPal link below. They're done through PayPal. You message me on Facebook, there's a link there as well. And you tell me what painting you want to buy, there's a link to show you what paintings are available. And um, yeah, you know what I did forget, which I will put in there, I'll grab me big blobbly, me big script liner, and I'll grab a bit more um, before it dries. It's, it's dry, but a bit tacky. So I'm grabbing this brush, and this brush, me scrumbling brush, okay? So what I'd like to do is grab some of this paint and we can taint it with a bit of maybe this colour here. So it's white but tainted white. Tainted white. <clears throat> there we go. And work out, ah, uh, probably some... Sh I'm going to start real thin if I can. I'll see how I'll go. I can only try, eh? Start from about there and just go, mm, nice, that'll do it. And then as I come here, I'm going to come a bit thicker and twisting the brush. There we go, like that. And just the top half of that, scrumble it left and right into the back of the, to the top half of the painting, leaving the nice, tight, line at the bottom side of the painting okay long hair and maybe i did a bit too much there do a bit at a time so i'll do a bit more there we go we'll go again just a bit here a little bit more get it on there don't be sure and just remember you can do this okay and if you feel you can't just practice every procedure you feel that I'm doing in here, like this line, the clouds, the water, the glare, whatever, whatever. Practice just those procedures on their own. And once you feel you've mastered them, put them into a full painting and it's fantastic. You'll have fun for the rest of your life when you're painting. There we go, look at that, eh? Now what you can do here, this is a bit thick. I'll probably put maybe another one about there-ish. I don't know, we'll see what that one looks like. Jeez, I said do a bit at a time and then I'll go and do a big bloody line, eh? I might have to get a bit more water in there. But these are fun to do, this sort of water. How's that look? Yeah, that's it's looking wet and just dancing along the, um, get this bit here, yeah. It's looking wet, glistening, um, soft, shiny, reflective. It's got that aspect going. And if your painting that you're doing has those aspects you're chasing, you've achieved what you are after. That's all that matters, eh? Yeah, I told you that for nothing. <laughs> Here we go. How's that looking in the monitor? That's okay. We can carry on like that for more and more if we need to, but I feel that'll do for this. For this. Uh, what are we doing next? Now, what I'd like to do, just let me see how, that's reasonably dry. I'm gonna grab the colors on the palette here already and me, me bullshit stick. This keeps things level in your painting. All right, so I'm gonna grab a flat because it's nice and sharp like a knife. And I'm just going to pick up some simple but effective burnt umber on me brush, okay? Dark enough. I'm just grabbing some there. I'm not gonna bother moving the camera because if I forget to move it and do half the paint, and a lot of people get grievously disappointed. And I know what that's like. 
So we're going to come like the picture there, and they've got a bit of a uh, jetty just above horizon there, so it's about about here. So we're just going to try and get a nice sharp line under horizon there. We're about there, said the bear. All right, and what have they got? Probably we'll make it a bit thicker. So we'll go down and we'll do another one there just to make it a bit thicker. Take your time, no rush. Never a rush to do a painting because that painting's going to outlive you and everyone else that watched you paint it. All right, boom, that can go to there. Get a bit more depth and darkness here. And if it's washing with the underneath paint, it just means you need to dry it a bit more. Now these are subtle. They're not big fat lines, all right? And go putting big fat lines in there. Sometimes you can get carried away, fatten things up and you stuff it. Now, we do have some jetty business. So I'm gonna watch. I'm just gonna, roughly what they got in the, in the uh, reference picture here, there's a lot of jetty business going on. So I'm just gonna roughly put it in and hopefully it'll look reasonable. And we've got some higher pylons here somewhere. Whoa, not that bloody big. Something out there, just a lot of... <laughs> get there, yeah. Get your paint wet enough. I've got to wet the brush a bit more. Otherwise it doesn't transfer properly. And if you're forcing it onto your canvas, you create messy bits that you're not quite happy with. And then we, we'll do that little hut that's in there. So he's about here somewhere, a bit further back. So we'll do some kind of resemblance of that hut. Uh, he, he's got a lot of mumble jumble under the water there as well. A bit there like that. And let's get the camera a bit closer if we can. Where are we? Where are we there? There we go. And how's that hut going? Oh yeah, it's just some, there's a few See this stick that's going to allow me to keep a nice straight line there, boom like that, maybe a little skinnier one underneath it, just like that. Just a bit of bullshit detail. And then we're going to create the roof. So the roof will come across here. And how is it? And we'll get the height of the roof. So he's up a bit about there and in a bit as well. That's in a bit. And then we just join it up. Bang. Bang. And then we'll colour that in. That's why I dried the sky, because this is going on a lot easier on dry paint, okay? This is all the dark colour. I've got to dry this a little bit to put a brighter colour on there. You'll see in a minute. But little things like this, it's such a little thing, but it makes a big impact. Where are we? We've got some more busy stuff just under here. There we go, there we go. I'm gonna finish using this color. To make it easy, I don't want those ridiculous, stupid mistakes that you can prevent. So I'm gonna grab a bit of tape, just so where the, the, the piers of the jetty are just in the water there. So we'll go, oh, don't press too hard in. Just there like that, that'll do. Get some of this. And we want the, um, where are we? About here, we've got a bit of business in the water there, a bit of business. And then we've got distinct pylons. One there, one there, and one out here. And pretty much it, oh, yep, yep, we've got a bit of railing business there. And that's it, take that out the way. See, so, and it just made that simple process Faultless. Now we want a um, brighter colour for the roof because it's got a lighter colour so we'll grab our lighter colour of that. So let's, let's say this here, we can just, just use this one here, maybe a bit of white. Can you see what I'm mixing there? Yeah. Is that pretty much what we're after? And we'll just lighten up what they have in the picture there, the lighter half of that roof which is 
pretty much here. There we go. We'll come down like the, the thatching straw on the roof as it is. Okay, we got that. Now I'm going to get a bit of white with that and marble it. There we go. And we'll get a crisp bit on the top there. There we go. How's that looking in the... That's it, see, it's far in the distance, but it's a lot of sauce for little spaghetti, isn't it, eh? There's other little little small objects. I'll do that later off camera, but they're out there in the in the distance. Now, before we get started, we're going to do the ending bit. So I want to dampen my brush, and I'm grabbing... I need some black. I do want to get a bit of black with the burnt umber. <laughs> to me, black and burnt umber make nice darky bits. So we'll come down here, there, burn umber, burn umber, there, I'll bring you down the palette, I'm going to show you what I'm doing, okay? So I've got me black and burn umber, so I want a dark burn umber, so I'm mixing some of that with the black first, and then I've got other burn umber here, plenty of burn umber, yeah, like that, yeah. All right. Now, we want to get, I'm going to roughly copy what they've got in the, <coughs> excuse me, reference picture. So it's coming from about here. Oh, goodness, I didn't leave enough. Um, oh, anyway, so we've got some coming out of there. Um, that ground was supposed to come up here further. Not to worry. Oh god, I've got something. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got something in my throat. Come along the water a bit. About there. <coughs> and then we got bushes. Now these bushes have some air in them. Air in them. See in the middle there? Gotta get a glass of water. Every time you go live, you get some sort of bug in your throat. <coughs> ah, there we go. Yeah, let's get back into it. So we'll come out here. A lot of darkness there. Over here. <coughs> and we got some higher bits here. Where's that flat? Where'd it go? <coughs> now, I'm going to pull some palm trees up. Is that dry? Got to dry that. Okay, let's try that. 
Now I want one at least from here, coming from there and up here, from there to there. So we'll get nice skinny on the top, a bit of fat at the bottom like that. Okay. And we'll get some, get this brush nice and flat so it's like a chisel. This one can be about there. And where do you want him to come? I want him to come, he's gonna come from out of this bunch here. So get the there and there. And then peripheral vision will bring you down to here. Okay. And we've probably got some big, big one right up here coming off the painting. Let's get him in there properly. And we've got some little ones here. One there. One there. And we've even got stuff here. This is like another big one coming from the side of the picture there. Oh, it'll help. Oh, is that up the top there? Yes. I want to just get this one a little bit better than that. There we go. How long have we been going for? 46 minutes. That's okay. Yeah, I could probably detail more later if I feel like it. Now, I'll grab that leaning on a stick and um, I'll use my flats. These are just simple silhouetted palm trees. Come out from the middle like a straight line and then scratch it, scratch it. You can even add some bends into those frongs. Okay, get another one. I don't want these bits too, too massive because they're nice tall ones with a little little head on them. Get something over here. Chisel up your paint on the brush as you're loading it up so it's nice and flat. Get something over here, bang, bang. There's so many ways. This is just the most simplest, effective um, bit of a palm prong you can do for a beginner. Um, anyone can do these. Now, if you have your own favourite way of doing them, by all means. Now, see, when you've done it, like I've done before, just busy up the middle. Make it busy. And if you can, get a nice long leg sticking down there like that. There we go. We can probably put that in there first. And this is another little one. And different size flats can make these um, palms work. Okay, you can highlight them with a bit of white in the same color to make them look dimensional. But make sure you get them a bit busy in the middle there, okay? There we go. This one can do with some more rubbish out there. Yeah, it's working, it's working. Uh, what I will do, because that's a smaller one, I'll just grab a smaller flat, wet it down a bit, so it's gonna transfer. Grab a smaller flat, because you're going smaller, and then do the same here again. Bang, bang, bang. The leg's already there. There's nothing to it really, is there really? It's, it just makes an effective, beautiful looking painting. Get one out here. See, I didn't chisel the end of the brush up on that one, so over there you can get a more controlled uh, palm prong, frong or prong. They call it something like that anyway. Cotton palms, coconut trees. even some 
chisel that up a bit more so it's nice and sharp because we've got some little stuff coming through here as well if you can how's that get him a bit darker and solid along that edge there come on there you go I tell you what, I feel better, but just 10 minutes ago, I just, it happens all the time when I go live, I don't know why it is, it's, you're fine and all of a sudden you get the coughs or the sniffles, I don't know if you noticed, but I had to plug, unplug me mic and go outside and just cough as hard as I can because I was drinking water, but nothing was getting rid of it. Well, I'll fix that up later, but you get the gist there. Okay, how's that looking? Okay, once I take the tape off that. Now we need a bit of a shadow under there. That's in the water. I'm going to have to come here and bring that forward onto the shore here. Get up there. Yeah. Come onto the shore here with some just detailed shrub there coming there <sighs> we just got a little little something out there these little things make good value your painting. Where will that look in the monitor? It's just like a little boat out there. And then we've got some probably ones out here. Just doing their thing. Oh wow, he's a real straight line in here. I'll just do two. Couple of little yachts in the background. Can you see them? Yeah, they're way out there. All right. Now what I'll do, I'll put a signature on here and we'll whack a frame on it. Down the bottom here. Where are we? Here. And just remember you can... Check out my links in the description below. Comment in the comments if you want to ask me anything. Join me on Facebook. And um, don't be shy to, no, don't be sh shy to share, like and subscribe. Steve's little footprint there. There you go. so it doesn't balk us. I'll move it there anyway. Okay, I'll put a frame on there. There you go. That's not too shabby. It's a beautiful Hawaiian scene or a palm scene, okay? Uh, the frame's setting it off, and we've got those little bit of elements in there that's making the painting. I mean, it's simple, but it's also effective. And just remember, you can do that, okay? So, come back here. Oh, where are we? Where are we? I'll get that caddy out the way there. Bit of glare everywhere, isn't there? I wonder how the glare was in this, because I had the curtain open. I wasn't even keeping an eye on the glare. Where are we? My monitor's got a hell of a delay. Um, now, just remember, uh, if you like what I'm doing here on my channel, make sure you tell your friends, even your family, all right? Uh, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, not me, all right? Uh, all the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya. Was there, thank you very much, Anthony, Carol, Isabella, Joyce, Christina, Celeste, Bridget, Tabitha, Carol, thank you everybody. It's a, it's a pretty easy painting, but it's quite effective, okay? Um, 
check me out on Facebook if you haven't already, become a member of my group. I do have it in the top of the announcements. Check out the room I've created there. Every night when I'm available, I just put a post up that I'm in the room. I've called it the lounge room. And it's just a video chat room where you can chill and chat with me live, okay, and talk about whatever. All right, so, oh, I've said me goodbyes. That's it, I'm done. <clears throat> Just finishing up now the way I normally bloody do. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that because once I turn the camera off, I might I might fine tune it and detail it. Okay, so I'll just go behind the camera here and say it's Uru from the Guru.